Hello and welcome to this video on encrypted visibility engine features in release 7.3 of the Cisco Secure Firewall. Been a couple of additions to the encrypted visibility engine in this uh, short-lived release 7.3. So I want to just go over those and uh, give you some tips on how to see those, maybe how to use those in your system. Basically two major features. The first one is visibility into quick and HTTP3 traffic. And that is we can now identify the client processes, even malicious possible processes, that are generating traffic using the quick uh, HTTP3 protocol, which are really interchangeable. Quick and HTTP3 are, are the same thing uh, in, from all practical standpoint. The second thing is the indications of compromise that can be raised now based on a malware detection. So if there's a malware detection on uh, for a process by EVE, uh, we can now raise an IOC or an indication of compromise on the host. And I'll show you what that looks like. IOCs are something that have been around for a while. We generally see them raised with intrusion events or with security intelligence events. Uh, you can now get those events with a, an EVE detection. So let's go over to events. So first I want to show you the events that you'll see now from EVE in 7.3 for these quick and HTTP3 connections. I said it'll typically be uh, HTTP 3 so if you see on this page here we have some events and the way you can really tell there's a couple things a couple of clues these are easy ways to find these events in your in your system first one is the port the destination port for these is typically going to be 443 UDP I think it's pretty much always going to be 443 UDP that's the the port that quick uses so when you see in the destination uh, port and IP ICMP code column there, you can see 443 UDP, that's your clue that it's a quick or HTTP 3 connection. If you look over to the right and the application protocol column, you can definitely see HTTP 3 down that list. Now you can see some apps on there uh, near the top. There's one for uh, Chromium. You can see the confidence score on the way on the right is 99%. I see Google Play and the client application has been identified as Chrome. Now, if I scroll that over to the right a bit, you can see the detection type column. So detection type is what tells you the component within the firewall that identified the client application. Client application is the far left column you can see there. That's what you use for app ID in the access control policy. So you can see that encrypted visibility is identified as the process that identified the client application within the HTTP3 traffic. You can see the lines there for Firefox and Chromium identified with a confidence score of 90-99% respectively and the client application is Firefox and Chrome. Now I want to show you something just about connection logging here so you're aware of how this works. Now UDP connections, as you're probably aware, uh, from the network layer don't have the same, they don't look the same as a TCP connection, right? So for a firewall to understand a connection, uh, it's pretty easy to see a TCP connection. You see a SYN, SYNAC, ACK, um, we see data, and at the end you see a FIN, FIN, ACK, ACK. So you see specific packets that let the firewall know, hey, this is the beginning, this is the end of the connection. So what we'll typically do in firewall policy, I'm going to go over to the policy right here. Well, typically what we'll do is we'll recommend if you want to log connection events to the firewall, to the log, uh, to your FMC, that you use the end of connection to log that. And the reason is by the end of the connection, we have all kinds of data about the connection, the number of packets, number of bytes, protocols, all kinds of things are complete. So when we log that, um, you have the complete view of the connection. Um, you have two options, though. If I go over to um, the typical rule, this is my catch-all rule here, allow outbound. Take a real quick look at this rule. Uh, so this basically is a catch-all rule to catch all traffic going outbound, and, which is allowed, and inspect it. And for logging, if I want to log all connections, for instance, here, I'll log at the end of the connection. I don't log at the beginning. Um, that'll actually give me two events if I log at beginning and end. So typically, we recommend just log at the end, um, again, with a TCP connection. As soon as it's over, the firewall knows and logs it. Now, with UDP, though, it's different, right? So for UDP, um, the firewall can't really tell it's the end of the connection unless it has some visibility to the application because technically there's no such thing as a UDP connection, right? That's at the network transport layer. There's no connection there, but it's maintained up at the application layer. Well, because that's encrypted, the visibility is not there for the firewall. So it has to make some assumptions. So it sees connections on certain ports and IPs, you know, common ports and IPs, and says, okay, there's traffic, that's a connection. It puts that in the connection table. But as far as when that connection ends, doesn't have a lot of visibility to that, so oftentimes it just has to wait for the timeout. Say, well, 
see some traffic between these two hosts and the same ports and so I think it's a connection so I'll log that but I have to wait till a timeout period of typically two minutes before it knows if that's the end and logs the connection so logging end of connection is a little bit more of a challenge for a firewall so what I found works very well here is I made a rule specific to quick in HTTP3, HTTP3 here so basically I said hey this is the, does the same thing as the rule below it does the same inspection it really doesn't do anything different I just wanted to make sure I identify this traffic and log it a little differently so if you look at this rule again I added application objects here for HTTP 3 and quick but if you look at the logging on this one I decided to log at both the beginning and the end now what you'll see typically with a quick connection is we'll log the beginning and oftentimes we won't actually log the end um, what I've found is sometimes it will but often it won't uh, so you still probably only get one connection out of this even though it's got both um, both of these things checked but uh, but you'll notice that it does log at the beginning and uh, you would think it all oh, with just the you know the initial first packet which isn't even a sin with UDP but the first packet um, you wouldn't get much information but it actually does populate uh, a bunch of information in the event in fact all the events we just saw uh, or that I just showed you those are beginning of connection events so you can see the protocols and all those different things that are kind of important to identifying the traffic and, and kind of logging it and, and characterizing it even with just a beginning of connection event so um, if you are going to do this and want to log those connections I would probably recommend you add a rule like this for the applications quick in HTTP 3 and log those at the beginning of the connection that way you can be sure to get all these events we saw over here now while we're on the subject before I uh, move on uh, how do you know it's a beginning or end of connection event I mean you know it doesn't really say that in here right well one way you can do this is well the only way I know actually is to add a column in here um, called last packet now in, in the connection events if you're familiar back in the other connection event table the older table shows these same connections but it calls it first packet and last packet here we call it time and last packet so time is actually the first packet so when you see the time column on the left that's the first packet we saw uh, last packet is the last packet right so for all these TCP connections that are logged without allow rule I showed you notice there is a last packet time right so those are all 443 TCP or some other TCP uh, protocol these are all 443 in this case but um, so that's why we have the last packet we've logged the last uh, the end of connection so that we see the first and last now where that's blank those are all beginning of connection events if you notice all those blank last packet fields are all those uh, most of them anyway except the blocks are the UDP events um, the only ones that are TCP are actually block rules we actually block the first packet so first packet is the last packet um, but for the for the UDP connections there you know it's those last packet times are all blank so that lets you know hey that was the first beginning of connection event but again if you look at that event it does have a lot of information and by the way here's something else you can do here so if I scroll over right now I'll lose that last packet field right it'll go behind the the uh, the event type there but I can actually freeze a column by just moving this over far enough and it'll actually freeze that column so now I can go over and still see those first last packets so it's kind of kind of a cool thing with this unified view uh, but you can see we still have all this information about these events even though uh, we only had the um, the first packet logging so you know so in this one here the first packets we've got you know the, the applications and the uh, um, the crypto visibility process score and all that stuff so I want to point that out how the connection logging works with Eve and that you uh, probably want to log at the beginning of the connection so identifying traffic within quick and HTTP 3 that's the first feature now the second feature is these indications of compromise so let's see what those are so to do that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go out and generate some malware so hold on one second I'm gonna go generate a malware event I'll be right back okay I'm back so I have generated a malware event I just ran out ran a, a quick script that actually sent some traffic that requests some traffic actually looks like malware and you can see right it's right there at the top right so we've got an encrypted vis visibility process name of malware and if we look over here at the source IP it says 10 1 132 so we can go look at the host record on that let's do that so we'll go up here we will view the host profile this is where you see those ILCs now you can go see the ILCs um, in views you can look at all the ILCs but look at a specific host and the ILCs this is how you do it so here's your host profile it tells you things about the host um, the operating systems and things like that um, 
Now here in red you can see the probable malware communication and it's suspicious activity and the event type is from the encrypted visibility engine. So that's that encrypted visibility event I just generated. I mean, this is just a minute ago, a minute ago I did that. And this is an example of an IOC event that was generated by Eve. And that is a quick overview of the new features in release 7.3 for the encrypted visibility engine. As always, see you next time and happy snorting. Thank you.